yeah so that's one thing i'm noticing like more and more but i also noticed it here in san antonio where uh people in, in non some of the nonprofit jobs like that's like it seems like it it the radical rhetoric fits right in with the nonprofit, and so. Uh, but that doesn't mean that nonprofits doing anything radical. Yeah, I mean, and that's what you know. One of Matt's comments was that you know, in order to move up in that world, you really need to know when to come out with the radical rhetoric and when to keep a lid on it. You know, and and when and where and to who you. You say those kind of things and that seems to be you know if you want to climb up the ladder in the nonprofit world you do as you say you have to be like somewhat radical you have to at least sound you know that way because people you know we want to think we're changing the world or something but you also have to not rock the boat too much <laughs> or you know too often or too hard uh because you know uh, most nonprofit, especially the big ones like they're just like any other bureaucratic organization and uh yeah that's that's just kind of the reality so once again the the takeaway i think was you know with the big money nonprofits and funders and grantors and stuff like that ideally we don't deal with them if we don't have to and when we do it's very strictly just you're getting money you're not doing the strategic planning right and that's one thing that always bugs me um is when you have a group of nonprofit and like you know corporate philanthropic quote unquote like types uh you know get together and want to do the strategic plan for how we're gonna you know help help the poor people and 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 you know the the disenfranchised and you know people sitting around eating caviar <laughs> strategizing about how to help the poor people like no no we'll make the plans like we and uh you know if you want to have your angel wings or whatever fine you can give us some money <laughs> but, you know but often it, it's the other way around right it's the they want to do the planning and and they and they come with the money and then they find some people in our organizations to to get on board well, so Supposedly that's what happened with a at a nonprofit in Chicago. I don't know if I should say the name, but there's this one nonprofit in Chicago. And supposedly like the antagonism or like uh, how do you say this like big open conflict that that emerged was from where the spending was going to go or what the nonprofits parties were supposed to be. And so supposedly or maybe it was just like the, the straw, the last straw. And uh, so supposedly the, the workers um, had a big disagreement with uh what direction the nonprofit was going to go and supposedly helping their community mm -hmm. and that's what triggered this like <laughs> to me it was like a little worker insurgency in the mm -hmm. nonprofit and there was a uh, a failed unionizing attempt um and i wish i could have told them ahead of time like hey you know you're probably not going to survive this unionizing attempt you should probably save your energy because you have no mm -hmm. idea the repression that they're going to hit you with right um to say, you know, if I live to fight another day in another way, because yeah. I, I, yeah, um, but that was really cool that that's like, that that's what kind of started this battle and that nonprofit was, it wasn't just about like their, their wages, they're thinking like big, like mm -hmm. how are we impacting society? That That's pretty incredible. And that happened very recently. Well, Objective I think in the past to... five years in, in Chicago. And they're just objecting to the kind of patronizing attitude of the of the nonprofit towards their their target it's, population, as they like to say. It's possible that was part of it, but I know that there was just like this. The way that it was communicated to me, they were like, "We know what our people need. It's not mm -hmm. this. It's not to go in this direction. We need to go in this other direction." Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, Probably not an option in this particular scenario, but does remind me of a, a case. Uh, we did a, a interviewed a woman uh, who is a founder of a worker co-op um, in Wisconsin. And that co-op started when same thing like staff insurrection at a nonprofit that was getting some big state grants um, and all the workers coordinated, quit simultaneously, set up their own nonprofit 
and then got the grant <laughs> that the nonprofit, you know, took the grant from the nonprofit they used to work for um, and have been doing great ever since. So, I mean, yeah, for nonprofit staffers, anybody listening, if you're upset with the direction of your employing organization, that could also be an, be an option. Um, and there, there's a Jew article for that one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I said, I interviewed uh, Kathy. Uh, what's her name? I can't remember her last name. It's something a little bit odd. Um, but yeah, it's on the Geo site. Uh, we'll let people dig around for it. I believe it's the Natural Heritage Center. Something mm -hmm. like that is the name of the co-op. Um, Outfit anyway. your employer. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>